Okay, time for the next installment. Uh, basically a shovel full of amateur video for the YouTube compost heap. <clears throat> this is concrete house building in the Philippines. And uh, this is a weekly update. And the first thing up here is the uh, dirty kitchen, which has the forms mostly taken off. Except behind this uh, moringa tree up here in the corner, there's a form for uh, a 14-inch diameter exhaust fan. It's red. And I can tell it's still in the wall. Uh, one of our guys said he couldn't stand looking at this ugly concrete. <laughs> and he's the guy that rendered the house, so he ought to know what ugly concrete looks like. Um, so he's decided he's going to render the outside of this dirty kitchen. I consider it a dirty kitchen. It's one step up above a dirt floor with a, a native fiber roof. It just happened to have concrete walls and a concrete slab. So if he wants to make it look like a house, I guess that's all right. But it's still going to be a dirty kitchen, you know. Um, I don't know if we have any. We have other pictures of this, though. This is Pinet Uh He's... Uh, it looks like he's shoveling up bags of uh, sand for render. That's the, that's the thing that they shake it out under. And in the foreground is uh, bags of gravel. We're getting ready to, to pour our first uh, shrimp tank, starting with the floor. You can't pour the walls, but the floor under it, so we're going to pour the floor. Uh, it takes 91 bags of cement, and that'd be 182 uh, sand, and 273 uh, gravel. Looks to me like he's out of gravel. I'll be hearing about that. Uh, this is back to Nane. He's, um, washing off a, uh, a, a mold. A form. Thank you. We got more people who do that. Uh, and inside you see some form just laying inside the wall. Um, this he's he rendered the top of this wall first, and then the um, uh, the bottom. Apparently the apparently he's working his way around the side over there to this side. So I don't know how much he's done already. He's um, I thought I had a place uh, here to show you how rough this concrete actually is. Well, we're gonna. This is another update. This is the, uh, all the deeper we're putting this uh, shrimp tank in the ground because it's, uh, it's got around six foot tall walls on it and, uh, five feet of, uh, water in it. It's, uh, 50 feet, uh, no, wait, 40, 48 feet long and 12 feet inside dimension on the water. So it's not a huge tank, but it's, uh, if you're growing shrimp or prawns, you know, it's plenty. They'll hang around the bottom. They don't much end up in the water column. But you need the depth to, to keep the water cooler. Um, this tank will absorb a lot of heat during the day and uh, have to radiate it off at night. But it, it's a thermal uh, thermal mass kind of deal. So I don't think we'll get a big temperature swing. Um, let me go back to this first picture again. You see the blue pipe sticking up out of the, uh, the top of this? That's for uh, uh, some light switches and electric outlets. <clears throat> We're going to put a concrete slab roof across this, but the roof is going to overhang the walls about four feet, and that'll shade the uh, sides of the building from uh, direct sun. And the, uh, the outside of the, uh, the overhang will have air circulation both sides, so it'll uh, uh, tend to cool that slab a little bit. And then there's going to be a, a, another roof or something above that. The concrete slab is just to seal the building up weather tight. There'll be a... Uh, I'm not sure where they're going to put uh, ceramic tiles. My wife says she wants a couple of bedrooms and a bathroom up there for anybody who's working in the kitchen. I don't know. We already got 28 rooms. That's another one. They all have a name. They all have a purpose, but they just keep coming. Over here... See an electric transformer? 
Uh, you can see how close it is to the house. Well, the house is not a... You really can't see the house uh, except through the windows of the dirty kitchen. You can see there's concrete on the outside of that dirty kitchen there. That's the house. So it's even closer to that transformer. They won't give us power. I'm not sure what the deal is. But I have to have those people before I can get a certificate of occupancy for that house. So we'll fight that battle later. Let's see who we're got these pictures from. That's from Boyette. Uh, this is Bia taking pictures with uh, um, Boyette's cam, Antonio Boyette Delamon, Utiga Delamon. We've been trying to get the dirt out of this cistern for uh, three weeks. It's hot down in there. I understand that. But the thing is, I have to paint um, elastomeric paint on the inside of the cistern. One, it seals up the joints between the, the floor and the wall and paint between the rings of the wall. Uh, so you have to put a, an, an acid or a, a base neutralizer on there, basic hydrochloric acid or something similar. And then you can paint it with this elastomeric paint. You put a coat on, on the, all the joints and then you paint the whole thing. And uh, that'll uh, slow down algae growth and make it a lot easier to clean. But it also waterproofs the tank. The concrete has got uh, Sahara. That's a brand name, but it's an ad mix you put in your concrete to make the concrete waterproof. So that's already in the concrete. But we're going to paint the inside of the tank. So the first thing is to get the dirt out of it. Uh, if you look at Cruise videos, this pile of dirt was about 10 feet high and 15 feet across big dome of dirt and uh, what it was is we were having trouble getting it out of there to, to get to work so we decided the rainy season was coming screw the dirt we're going to pull the walls we're going to pull all the underground walls at least the first ring on everything going in the ground and then during rainy season we can add rings on top of it uh, even if they're working in two feet of water the, the, the forms aren't in water and we can backfill around the outside for something to stand on and mostly work from the outside so we, we went around and uh, basically because they, they were so fast on the septic tank, when we got the cistern, we had the first ring. And so you have to sort these forms and, and, and get them all to come out to the right length. Uh, because we had put rebar in the concrete that, that tied the walls. So we had to land on top of those rebars. And it was measuring errors by virtually everybody. So uh, the forms and the, uh, the stuff sticking up didn't... Uh, necessarily agree and uh we just made some filler form pieces maybe 18 inches wide to uh i don't know if you can see it over here there's this there's a place here 18 inches uh wide one on either side and uh that let us pour and once you have those all those forms sorted you take the bolts out and just slip them straight up and put the bolts back in it just seemed like it was foolish to take and go start a, a different uh, first ring and mix all the forms up again. Because we have like uh, four different lengths of forms. Uh, because they were designed to do the dirty kitchen. And uh, we just used them on all this first. Like we have a, a 82 and a half inch form and a nine foot form and then two corner forms. Makes the long wall in the dirty kitchen. So this one had an, an 82 and a half on one side. And a 96 on the other side, because there was only one of the 82 and a half. Then we have a lot of 96s and a lot of 48s. Uh, they don't cost much to build, and you hate to stop in the middle of something. So we got we got a plenty of them. We won't have enough for the shrimp tank, because we weren't planning on doing it. And it's got uh, a lot more than the 92-foot wall we have forms for. It's got a 90. It's got 96 just on the two sides, and and need uh, 24 more for the two ends. Anyway, as you can see, this concrete doesn't really need a lot of rendering. It's pretty flat just the way you pour it. Um, that's just showing both guys in the same hole. Uh, they're showing me that the inside of the form uh, is damaged from, from when it was stripped. I got about eight of those to deal with. Um, if you put WD-40 on your form, just spray it and then wipe it around with a rag. It's a dry lubricant. It dries right onto the stuff. It prevents water from getting in it at all. 
and forms just fall off. Unfortunately, we're under lockdown and we can't get to the next town where we need to buy that. So, so much for that. And this is the result. I tell them that we can take these, uh, um, these form pieces here. You know, this, these holes are drilled according to a, uh, an actual pattern. If we take all the screws out and flip this over, the side that's been outside the concrete, uh, should be flat. So we use them twice. Um, but every time we go to do that, there's, there's a lot of you know, back and forth. And we end up putting new finoli board on it. But if you're a little more, uh, firm in your decision, you really can flip these, uh, these plywoods and use both sides. And when it comes off after that second size, it's not even good for firewood. Another one with uh, some uh, damage. Now, you can take uh, duct tape and put over this. Uh, it, it doesn't uh, do as good as the silver actual air conditioning tape, uh, which is used to seal ducts. But the silver, there's nothing you can put on that that the concrete doesn't just stick to like it's uh, on there with uh, super glue. It seals the forms up great. It leaves a beautiful finish. But it comes off uh, with the concrete, not with the form. So you want to avoid that. And there's one where the corner's peeling up. Now, I know what happened to that one. Somebody cut a block in there and beat it with a big hammer, trying to knock a form loose early on. Because I saw that when it was, uh, it was being put up the second time. Let's see, who, who haven't we heard from here? Lucas, give us a picture on this. Let's see that. No, he didn't send any on this. Okay, uh, we looked at Boyette's. Okay, this is one uh, Benji sent. You notice we have plants growing out in there? Golly. A water tank. At least they got plenty of water. Um, problem here is we got this clay that washes in with the water. Now, once we get this tank uh, cleaned out and painted, we make a sluice that comes from that big gutter around the house to go in here, and it won't ever see clay. So uh, we should be able to filter this into perfectly clean water. But right now, we're dealing with... Uh, a big pile of mud was in the middle of it, and rainwater come down and washed that, that clay like that. And it's left it uh, probably quarter inch deep after that water evaporates. So they got to run a flat shovel along that and scoop it up, and then let it dry another day and get uh, one of those uh, local kind of brooms made out of, I guess, reeds. And they have to sweep down all the walls and, and the floor, and then to get the shop back and take all that dust away. That way we're ready if we had, we haven't got the money for the paint. <laughs> we're, 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 we're on our, uh, edge of finances on this thing because we're building out of social security. We still have to buy food and live and pay taxes and everything. So it's, uh, that's why it's taken five years to build this house. It's built on social security. And it's basically robbing our, our, our the better parts of our life to get, get a house built. And at 80 years old, we don't need another house, but, we're helping people and supporting families and enjoying the Philippines, so we may move into it. But we've already figured out who to leave it to, so that they can finish it if we don't. Um, anyway, we have to get all this mud out of here. I thought we had pictures from somebody else. I don't believe this one is. This is the girl that shops for us. I'm not sure. Oh, this this is the uh, the rock and sand uh, lined up for the dirty kitchen. It'd be uh, three gravels and two sands in rows, and. Uh, we put the mixer and, and the materials all together right next to what we're pouring. They use carrying stuff halfway across the yard when, when it's hot out. 
Um, but she does the uh, all our shopping. And uh, I don't know if there's anything else to look at here today. My, my wife puts these pictures on a hard drive and she got to them before I did. So there's not many left. Just in passing, uh, I wife stamped these holes in here for me, and then I drilled them on a drill press. Um, they sent us this to show they could put it in not level. Uh, so, uh, be some rework there. Anyway, there's 170 of these in, in the house, various places. It can be uh, uh, receptacles. You can have a 220 and 110 receptacle. And then they make wall switches that fit into the same uh, format. And we bought some uh, uh, regular wall switches, uh, Cooper brand. And then we bought uh, um, some industrial grade three-way and four-way switches rated to 20 amps. They also fit the same format. Um, there's, there's stampings in here for additional holes, but we didn't drill them. Because some of these have uh, two holes on each end rather than just the one. But anyway, this is what we're using for wall plates. And the concrete itself, we had a block of wood in there when we poured it. So uh, we waited a month or so for the bugs to get at it. And then took a, a big chisel and a hammer and knocked the blocks of wood out. So we have a, a concrete uh, receptacle box, basically. If they make me put uh, receptacle boxes in there, they'll fit. But there's enough room to the concrete to put some mortar around it. If there weren't so many, I might do it without even asking. And the other thing is, they're not giving us electric. They won't let us hook up to that transformer out front. So I don't give a shit what they say. Um, I'll just do what I want to at this point. If they don't like it, I'll get solar panels or I'll get the turbine up on the roof and we'll have wind power. But anyway, this is so I can have a metal cover plate because the screws strip out over here so bad on everything, on the plastic. And uh, th these... Uh, the little holes here, they uh, uh, go into the, the the piece you're putting on. There's three holes, one in the middle and two ends. And the big ones go into uh, anchors in the wall. Uh, rather than trying to screw this little hole into a plastic uh, box, uh, the people over here just tend to strip those holes as fast as you can buy boxes. So if they're not stripped, they will be when you try to uh, do something. And uh, then you have to bust out the concrete around it and change the box. And we had to do that in the house we live in. I tried to, uh, well, I painted the house. I had somebody paint it. And uh, I thought you could just buy new cover plates. So I told them, don't worry about getting a little paint on. We'll, buy, we'll just buy new plates. Turns out they're not interchangeable over here. So we had to change the receptacles and the boxes to, to fit the new, the new receptacles. So we had to bust out the concrete on every box in the house. Lesson learned. I think that's pretty much everybody that sent a picture today. What they're doing. The big thing we wanted pictures of was the cistern. So uh, they sent that. Uh. See, they can put those plates in level. That one's in level. And is it a... It's leaning against an exterior... Nope. It's leaning in the kitchen. The kitchen has this uh, another window like we have on the exterior with the grills in it. I was going to have a pass-through here to, uh, to a table. But my wife moved the dining hall over to outside of this door here. So uh, this is now a... Uh, Entry vestibule or whatever. We'll, we'll think of a name. I don't know what to call it right now. Um, anyway, these holes around the outside get three quarter inch steel rods, and uh, they go down to a, a barren housing made out of uh, oh, 41, 40, 40, 40, 10, 16 stainless, 
uh, 304 stainless, any block of uh, stuff that doesn't rust or, or rust very little. We're going to paint it, but I didn't want to look at rust for the whole month or two to stay it on the table. Anyway, this this there's two holes in each of these long things here. So there's another hole that you just can't see here, but there has to be. It, all of them are drilled. This matches up to 20 holes that come down through the spider beam up in the center of the atrium. And uh, they get uh, they get at least half-inch rods, but I believe we can put five-eighths in there. And since we're putting three-quarter-inch rods to hold the bearings, I, I think same number of uh, places, I guess I'm probably going to put five-eighths in that. It just costs more. Other than that, I'd, you know, I'd put it right from the start. Um, anyway, this gets bolted to the ceiling. The 20 rods go to two different levels on the uh, bearing housing. It looks like the spokes of a motorcycle wheel. And uh, that's going to be a whole house fan, 7 meters in diameter. Uh, right now the house is completely cool. It, um, it has thermal mass. Concrete has an R value of 2, like 1, 2. It does nothing. But the poured concrete on this house is 7 inches thick. So that gets us to R14 really quick. And then we have three centimeters of render. Uh, I don't know what the original problem was. So we went with the render, but we just, we decided to render a poured concrete house. And we put on uh, two by two welded wire mesh with uh, spacers. There's videos, uh, older videos show it, what it looks like and how we go about it. But uh, if it was completely detached from a wall from heating and cooling uh, changes and things, and and it got uh, unstuck. It won't go anyplace because it's bolted to the wall. Or nailed, I guess maybe it's more like nailed. But uh, the house is completely pleasant any time. Uh, and we have a, a floor, temporary floor, on the first floor ceiling that covers the uh, atrium going up because we're using it for a workshop. It's a 26-foot diameter room, uh, and there wasn't anything in it. And that, that was part of the formwork for the, uh, it held up the spider beam when we poured it. We just took the upper layer of, uh, shoring off. And that's, that was an intermediate layer of shoring, tying all the supports together down below. Uh, same supports, just a different, different length of support. So we took the top ones away and then disassembled those. And then we had this bunch down here. We're going to use them on the, uh, cistern. Um, uh, and then we'll use them on the dirty kitchen after that. And then we'll take them apart. Uh, there's nothing else that's going to be poured that's 11 feet tall. I hope there's nothing else big that wouldn't need them. But uh, I can't ever tell. Uh, we got um, one coat of uh, skim coat on the first floor. And um, the bags of skim coat are in some picture around here. I'm not exactly sure where. We got another 50 bags laying around. And uh, basically you... you uh, sand these uh the skim coat and we have a seven inch circular sander with an exhaust on it it blows the uh the stuff 10 feet away and then you you put that into your shop vac and the shop vac collects the concrete dust that and a really good respirator now we have some regular respirators like this one down here cartridge respirator but i got some uh some ones with uh almost hepa filters on them what this thing is showing is we hadn't welded the uh, the bottom of all the joints. And I told them to go ahead and weld that in, in front of the... Uh, uh, there's some grills that go up and some slots up in the ceiling. Uh, this exhaust for the uh, whole house fan. There's 10 slots about 8 feet by 2 feet around the, around the room. And uh, those were never finished welded. So uh, ran out of welding rods. So he's, he's welding on those, but I told him to go ahead and put this thing in the middle of, the, of it because I need to get it uh, touched with a grinder to clean the rust off and then uh, a couple coats of paint on it. Because while we have all that scaffolding up there, we can put this thing up uh, without anybody getting hurt. We just throw it up on the work table that's underneath of the center of the room and put the threaded rods down and wind it up with the nuts. Probably three rods to bring it up and then, and then we'll cut them off what we brought it up with. And that'll give us another three. And then we have to come up with, <laughs> well, 20 minus uh, 6, 14. 
Sounds like a lot. That'll be a trip to the Bolt Depot. In uh, General Trios. There's another uh, place up there. Uh, Cowboy Land. Uh, hardware. We get all our bolts at one or the other. Right now we're doing with it at Bolt Depot. Uh, counter Girl loves to see me come. She says, so you have one of these? She puts it on the counter and she gets her notepad. I said, no, no, no. I want 300 of them. Or have you got 900 of those? You know, and she never says a thing. Just starts counting. So I call her Counter Girl. Oh. Uh, this grill is not actually mounted into the wall because it fits a lot closer than that. This is supposed to be up, up in here. I don't know how it's up there. It's not, gravity's not got a hold of it yet. But there's a tab that goes uh, uh, on the back of this, little rectangular tab on, around, around that. And uh, it's got a piece of uh, rebar welded to it. And that goes six inches into the, into the solid concrete. And then there's a, uh, uh, every other bolt's an Allen bolt, and every other bolt between that's Torx. It takes two kinds of wrenches to get one of these grills out of the wall. Uh, or you have to grind off the, all the threaded rods at least halfway around before you can slide it out of the rest of them. So that's our mountain scheme. That ought to confuse the enemy. This door over here, that's a narrow door. I'm not sure where that one goes. Must go upstairs because it's leaves. Downstairs is all uh, tropical fish. Might just be me. That might, that may be a wide door. It's just so far away, and I can't I can't see the bottom. Uh, the wide doors are uh, four foot six. They're wheelchair access uh, plus, and the narrow doors are wheelchair access also plus, but just six inches narrower. There's a wide door to the left, and and this one over here. This is a narrow door right here on the right. The narrow door is close, and all these ones uh, around the. Uh, atrium they're wide doors and then there's a door here that you can't quite see and that's a narrow door that goes room to room that's required by fire code uh our first uh run on the building permit failed uh one for the electrical service i put the service i needed not what what the biggest i could put on a house and they decided they wanted more i said it because i haven't got to buy a transformer um at uh, uh, what was it, 100, 125 or 150 amps? I know everything I have in the U.S. is 200 amp, but I don't have as much stuff going on. I'm not running a machine shop off of my house in in, uh, in the Philippines. I got a full blown machine shop running off the house in in uh, the Carolinas. You know, it's, it's got like a seven horsepower milling machine in there and a about a ten horsepower lathe, and all you only run one of them at a time. I don't. I don't try to. Run, well, no, the CNC runs all by itself. I turn it on, forget it. But it's not that big a horsepower. Maybe three or four. Anyway, they they failed the electrical uh, thing, and uh, I had to have them them redraw it. Never got a copy of the drawing. Don't know what they changed, but they changed something, and it cost five thousand pesos. It's a hundred dollars. And the other one they failed was the fire department. We got a concrete floor, concrete walls, concrete ceilings, concrete furniture, uh, metal grills in the windows, uh, and glass. Uh, I'm not planning on a lot of overstuffed furniture. But anyway, we have to have two means of egress out of every room. Uh, halls wider than uh, three and a half meters or something like that. So we failed that uh, sheet. So that, that's why we have these... Uh, uh, ten more doors added to the house. Each of the ten sections connects with the one beside it. Uh, it's a little hard on arranging all these bathrooms. All the, all the ba bedrooms have bathrooms attached. So uh, between the bedroom and the bathroom and a place to put a queen-size bed, uh, a 24-foot room is not that big anymore. It's like 22 uh, on, the, on the radial dimension and 24 on the outside and uh, about 9 on the inside going around the atrium, sort of a trapezoidal shape. But by the time you put the stuff you have to have in some clothes closets, it's not a, it's not 
as big a bedroom as it sounds. I don't know how people do it with one a fourth that size. Who we got here? Uh, that's Lucas's new baby. Uh, Lucas's baby's name's Lewis. Hmm. Uh, somebody's getting ready to pour some concrete. We got the water in the barrel and the mixers down there. And this must be an awful place to work. This is a septic tank. It's down on the side of a hill. And they, they've staged some stuff going up the hill, but it looks like most of it's not either not brought down yet or it's uh, it's just too treacherous to carry. Oh, that's the house in the background. Can't, it's, it's so... Uh, Sort of faded out from the light. This little hole here is a, a, a vent in a bathroom. 14 inches diameter. Okay, so uh, that's enough rambling for today. Uh, the pictures I wanted to show you disappeared but between the time I got this gimbal to work. And, uh, and now... That's Lewis's mama. He's putting the welder away for the day. And uh, that's Lucas. This, our, uh, our two welders are Lucas and Benji. That's Benji Boy Welding. They call him Boy. He's, uh, he only found his name was Lucas when they tried to get a uh, Social Security card. <laughs> uh, they had two people in, the, in, the, in his family using the same name. And apparently the other one owned the name and his was Lucas. So he didn't uh, know that because he'd been called boy all his life. One of them had a son that didn't have any name. And we named him Tolino. <laughs> Calling somebody the baby when he's four years old, it's, that's, uh, it's time to get a real name. He's dragging it into the bakery back there. Um, okay. Bye for now.